Chapter 25 Elizabeth sat in a rocking chair by the fireplace. Her hair fell in tangles down her back. Her eyes, red-rimmed and bloodshot, stared out from her tear-stained face. She rocked back and forth, back and forth, hugging her knees under her torn blue dress. Kate was a liar, Elizabeth murmured, rocking. Kate was a liar. Kate was a liar. Mrs. Fear stood over the rocking chair, helplessly wringing her hands. Mr. Fear stared at his daughter in horror and disbelief. Frank sat tensely on the couch, his eyes darting from face to face. Simon paced the room, lost in his own unhappy thoughts, not seeing anyone. Kate was a liar, Elizabeth murmured. Frank did not love Kate. Frank loves Elizabeth. She lifted her head to search for Frank. Her eyes met the horrified stares of her parents instead. Why are you staring at me that way? she screamed. I did not kill her. I swear it. Her mother and father said nothing. Elizabeth rocked again. They do not believe me, she thought bitterly. It is written all over their faces. They think I killed my own sister. They think I stabbed Kate with a knitting needle. Frank was at her side now, kneeling beside the rocking chair. He took her warm, sticky hand in his. His hands were so cool, so calm and soothing. Elizabeth is the gentlest creature I know, Frank said to her parents. She could never kill anyone. Still, her parents said nothing. Her mother's face was twisted in grief, fear, and confusion. Elizabeth focused on Frank only. Frank's handsome face was calming. He gave her a tiny, encouraging smile. At once, she felt better. I would be all alone in the world without Frank, she thought. Then she said to her family, Frank believes in me. He knows I am innocent. Why don't you believe me? No one said a word, but Elizabeth could see it on their faces. They blame me for Kate's death, she thought. They blame me and Frank. Mr. Fear stormed out of the room. Mrs. Fear hurried after him. Then Simon, too, strode out, disgust registered on his face. Elizabeth dissolved into tears and continued to rock back and forth, back and forth, crying. Hush, Frank whispered. Hush, Elizabeth. Forget about them. There is nothing you can do to make them believe you. He gave her a white handkerchief. She tried her eyes. My own family, she whispered. They will never believe in me. They will never speak to me again, I suppose. You are too hard on them, Frank said. They do not want to accept the truth. They cannot accept it. That is why they will not believe you. Now he took both of her hands in his. But I believe in you, Elizabeth. I always will. She stopped rocking and smiled at him gratefully. It is hard for a mother and father to imagine their own child killing herself, Frank went on. But I know that is what happened. Kate killed herself. Your parents did not see it. Simon did not see it. But you and I could see it. Kate was going mad. Elizabeth nodded. All that strange behavior, it was the only logical explanation. Kate was jealous of you, Frank said. You know I never told Kate I would marry her. How could I? I am in love with you. He kissed her hands. Elizabeth drank in every word he said. Kate made it up, said Frank. She made up that whole story about our engagement. She ran right to tell you first. I think she really believed it was true. She was mad, truly mad, the poor girl. Poor Kate, Elizabeth whispered. She was capable of anything, said Frank. No one could help her. Elizabeth knew he was right. She sighed and started rocking again. Frank, I cannot stay here. They all hate me. She gestured toward the second floor, where her parents and Simon had gone. I must get away. I know what to do, Frank said. We can run away together. We shall elope. He gently took her chin in his hand and turned her face toward his. Elizabeth Fear, will you marry me? They were the most wonderful words Elizabeth had ever heard. She felt a little of her old spirit come back. Yes, she said, throwing her arms around Frank's neck. Yes, we will leave tonight. Elizabeth's touch gave Frank a cold chill, but he did not let it show. Yes, he thought to himself, we shall elope. We shall leave this house tonight, Elizabeth and I. But only one of us will return, and it will not be Elizabeth. This trusting girl will pack up all her belongings, he thought gleefully, and follow me wherever I go. I will take her into the woods and kill her, just as I killed her sister. Kate's face was so wonderfully surprised at the end, he thought. When she saw me coming, she smiled. She opened her arms to me. Even when I raised the knitting needle over my head, she did not understand. She had no idea what was happening, not until the very last second. Then she understood it all.
it came to her in a flash. The horror of betrayal. The fears need to learn what that feels like. They will all know soon enough. Chapter 26 Simon paced the house as if in a daze, weighted down with grief and sadness, his mind wearing with thoughts of Kate's death. His parents were locked in their room. Through the door he could hear his father's heavy boots on the floor, his mother weeping and wailing for her daughters. Elizabeth, too, was shut in her room. Simon put his ear to the door. He heard her scurrying around. What could she be doing, he wondered. He was afraid she had lost her mind. Evening fell. No one prepared supper. No one thought of eating. Simon's grief gave way to uneasy restlessness. I have to get out of this house, he thought, or I will go mad. The sky was still hovering over the trees, as Simon made his way out of the house. But once in the woods, the darkness surprised him. It was midsummer, and the leaves were at their thickest. They blocked out most all of the fading sunlight. Simon found the woods unusually still. The daytime animals had already hidden away for the night. The nocturnal creatures had not yet crept out of their dens to hunt. Simon walked on, deeper and deeper, into the woods. All he wanted was to put his house and family behind him. He found himself at the clearing with the two flat stones. The woods were almost completely dark now. Simon sat on the bigger stone, the one that had once been his throne. He patted the smaller stone beside it, that had been Kate's. Kate was dead now. Kate is dead. He realized he could not escape from his grief. Simon peered through the darkness, staring at the spot where he had found Kate's body. A cold chill ran down his back as the ugly sight returned to him. Kate's eyes, so glassy, so empty, the needle poking out of her chest. The blood had spread across the front of her dress. The blood had spread like evil, Simon thought, and now there is evil everywhere. It lives inside my family's house right now. Evil lives inside Elizabeth and Frank. It lives in these woods, in the air around me. He took a big gulp of air, then exhaled. It lives inside me, too, he thought. I feel it. There is evil living inside me. Then the deep silence of the woods was broken. Simon heard a noise, the sharp snap of a twig, somewhere nearby. Simon froze. He listened. Was it an animal? A deer? Snap. The noise was behind him. How had it moved so quickly, so quietly? Simon wanted to turn, to look, but he was paralyzed with fear. Something grabbed him from behind. A claw. Pain shot through his shoulder. The claw dug deeper. Simon turned at last. He took one look at his attacker, and the blood drained from his face. He screamed. Chapter 27 Old Aggie! Simon felt the blood throb at his temples. He had never seen the old woman so close up. Her face was hidden by a black hood. In one wrinkled hand she held the cane she always carried. The fingers, on the other hand, were covered with rings. They dug into Simon's shoulder. Aggie was so stooped that her head was even with Simon's as he sat before her. Simon tried to stand. But with one wrinkled hand, the old woman held him in place. The pain in Simon's shoulder deepened. Do not go, she commanded in a gravelly voice. Shaking, Simon tried to calm down. It is only an old woman, he told himself. Only an old woman. Sorry I screamed like that. You startled me, he stammered. Old Aggie slowly let go of his shoulder. Simon felt her long fingernails pull out of his skin. She held out her bony, jeweled hand. Give me your hand, she croaked. Simon hesitated. He saw her black eyes glowing like coal under her hood. Your hand, she repeated in her deep, raspy voice. Simon obeyed. He offered her his trembling hand. She took it firmly in her own and bent close to his palm, her long, crooked nose almost grazing his hand. Finally, she released his hand and trained her eyes on his face. Simon's heart pounded as he waited to see what would happen next. The children said she would kill us and eat her hearts, he thought, remembering his childhood fears of old Aggie. But that had been a foolish childhood tale. Aggie cleared her throat. Hear me, Simon, fear, and hear me well. How does she know my name? Simon wondered. He did not dare to ask her. You have allowed a man named Franklin Good into your home. Am I right? croaked old Aggie. Simon nodded. That was foolish of you, 
He will destroy you all. You must stop him. Simon swallowed. Old Aggie continued. Franklin Good killed your sister Kate. At this very moment, he plots the death of Elizabeth. Simon was shaken. Could the old woman be speaking the truth? Fear, old Aggie murmured. Fear, fear, a terrible name, a cursed name. What do you mean, Simon demanded. Why do you say that, old woman? Your fate lies in your name, old Aggie replied, her face hidden in the darkness of her hood. The letter is in your name. They can be rearranged to spell fire. F-I-E-R. F-I-R-E. She repeated the two words several times in her croaking voice, chanting them to sound like curses. I do not understand, Simon confessed. That is how your family will come to its end, old Aggie rasped. What? How? he demanded. How? By fire, she murmured. F-I-E-R. Fear. F-I-R-E. Fire. You shall meet your end by fire. Simon gasped as old Aggie pointed a long, terrible finger into his face. You are under a curse, she cried. A curse cast by the goods and by your own evil history. Now you have allowed a good into your home, into your family. Your suffering will know no end, Simon Fear. But w what can I do? Simon choked out in a shrill, tight voice. What? The old woman reached into the folds of her long black robe and pulled out a small silver dagger, its handle studded with dark rubies. Take this dagger, she whispered. Its tip is poisoned. You only have to scratch the skin of your enemy with it, and he will die. Simon took the dagger from her with a trembling hand. Be careful, she warned him. The dagger will only work once. Do not waste the poison. I, I will not, Simon promised, gazing at the dagger as if it were alive. Old Aggie nodded. Go now. Hurry before it is too late. Simon jumped up and began to run through the dark woods. When he glanced back at the clearing, the old woman had disappeared. Had she told him the truth? Was the rest of his family in danger, in danger from Frank Good? Or was the old woman as crazy as the children always claimed? A yellow glow led him back to his house. He emerged from the woods and saw the kitchen ablaze with light. The rest of the house was in darkness. Simon burst into the kitchen doorway and stopped. He stared down and saw his mother sprawled in a dark puddle of blood on the floor. Simon's father was slumped over the kitchen table. Bright red blood had flowed from a wound in his side and lay pooled on the floor. Simon! Elizabeth's voice. Simon raised his eyes from the horrifying sight of his murdered parents. Elizabeth was cowering in a corner by the hearth. Frank Good stood before her an axe raised over her head, the axe that he had used to murder Simon's parents. The blade was stained blood red in the firelight. Simon cried out as Frank let the axe fall. Chapter 28 Simon tried to cry out, but the sound caught in his throat. Elizabeth uttered a high-pitched howl. The axe made a whistling, slicing sound as it fell. It grazed Elizabeth's head, chopping off a clump of her hair. As she began to sob, Frank tossed his head back and laughed. Just teasing you, Elizabeth, he said, but the next one is for real. Elizabeth pressed herself against the wall and panted. Without realizing it, she had wrapped her hand around the pendant she had found in the garden. Frank turned to Simon and smiled. The fear's nearly won, he said. Your family nearly managed to destroy the goods forever. That is what your ancestors wanted, is it not? to wipe us from the face of the earth. Gripped with the horror of the scene he had walked in on, Simon struggled to breathe. The last trickles of his father's blood on the floor roared like a rushing waterfall in Simon's ears. Frank took a step toward him. In the end, though, Frank continued slowly, calmly, the goods will survive. I am the last of my family, but that is enough. I have served my ancestors well. I have lived to destroy the fears. He took another step towards Simon, the axe blade red and gleaming in the firelight. Simon's trembling hand squeezed the handle of the silver dagger, hidden under his coat. He hoped old Aggie had been telling the truth about the dagger's power. Frank hoisted the axe high. With a loud grunt, he swung the axe down towards Simon's head. Elizabeth's scream pierced the air. 
Simon ducked out of the way as the axe blade dug deeply into the tabletop. Simon had the advantage and drew the dagger from under his coat, lunged forward, and scratched the blade across Frank's arm. A tiny red line, as thin as a hair, appeared along Frank's forearm. He stared at it, then at Simon. He burst out laughing. Is that how you hope to stop me, Simon? he cried, with a scratch from a dagger. Simon stood panting, his chest heaving. Frank laughed. With every sound Frank uttered, Simon felt his heart grow colder. He raged with hate for Frank and for every good who had ever lived. Frank turned back to Elizabeth. If you are going to fight me, Simon, I will have to take care of your little sister first, he said. Elizabeth had darted away from the corner, but there was nowhere for her to run. Frank easily pulled the axe blade from the tabletop and took a step toward Elizabeth. Then another. Simon, help me, Elizabeth cried. Help me. Frank took another step toward her. He started to raise the axe. The old woman's magic. It hadn't worked, Simon realized. I am not strong enough to pull the axe from Frank's grip. I am not strong enough to fight him. I foolishly counted on old Aggie's magic. And now Elizabeth and I are going to die. Across the room, Frank uttered a triumphant roar as he moved in on Elizabeth, his axe blade raised high. Chapter 29 Simon, stop him! Elizabeth's terrified cry rang in Simon's ears. He started to leap at Frank, hoping to pull him down from behind. But Simon stopped halfway across the kitchen and stared in amazement as the axe fell from Frank's hand, ringing against the stone hearth. Frank's eyes rolled back in his head. He uttered a startled cry and crumpled to the floor. Elizabeth's eyes flew open. Her entire body was trembling. Simon bent over Frank's body and examined him. Dead. Frank was dead. The poison had worked. Simon ran to comfort his sister. He wrapped his arms around her and held her until she stopped shaking. We are safe now, he whispered. We are both safe. Elizabeth nodded, crying softly, and buried her head in his chest. Simon gazed over her shoulder at the gruesome scene in the kitchen. His mother and father lay in congealing pools of blood. They had always been kind, good people, Simon knew. They were kind and took in a starving drifter, and he murdered them in return. Kate had never harmed anyone in her life, and she had been brutally, coldly murdered too. Goodness is weakness, Simon told himself. That is clear to me now. Goodness is weakness. Only evil can fight evil. Elizabeth and I will leave this house, he decided, holding his sister, letting her cry. This house holds only memories of horror for me. Elizabeth's tears slowed. Simon, she said, you saved my life. She touched the silver amulet again. We are orphans now. You and I are the only ones left. I, I cannot help feeling that this amulet had something to do with saving us. The silver disc flashed in the firelight. The deep blue stones glowed like human eyes. Elizabeth pulled the pendant over her head. She gazed at it, then held it out to Simon. I want you to have it, she said. Please take it. Its power saved me. From now on, that power must be yours. Simon bent forward, and Elizabeth slid the silver chain over his head. Immediately he felt warm. He closed his eyes, but instead of darkness he saw flames, hot red fire. The flames faded quickly, and then Simon saw only Elizabeth's tear-stained face watching him. He led his sister away from the scene of horror, out of the kitchen, into the cool night air. He thought of the flames, and old Aggie's words echoed in his mind. The letters in your name spell fire, and that is how your family will come to its end, by fire. I will not let it happen, Simon thought grimly, as he and Elizabeth stared at the full moon rising. Old Aggie's prediction will not come true. I have the power to stop it. I can change the future. The last good is dead, he thought with satisfaction. The feud is over now. The curse has been erased. All except for the fire. The fire in my name. The amulet burned against his chest as he thought about the fire, the letters in his name. And then suddenly, he knew. He knew exactly what he had to do. It is simple, he thought. I will change my name. I will change the letters so that they will no longer spell fire. That will end the curse once and for all. Elizabeth gripped his hand tightly. She is still afraid, he thought sadly. She does not understand that there is no need to be afraid any more. There are no more goods, no more feud, 
No more curse. We are safe. This time, it really is over. I am the one who can beat the ancient curse. I am powerful. I will change the future, beginning with my name. I am no longer Simon Fear, F-I-E-R. Now and forever, I will be known as Simon Fear, F-E-A-R. Village of Shadyside, 1900 The candle burned low as Nora continued to write. She dreaded the moment when the candle would sputter and die. But even more, she dreaded the dawn. She glanced at the page she had just written and sighed. If only Simon had been right, she thought. If only it had all stopped right there. Then everything would be different. Perhaps I might even be happy now, living with the man I love. Maybe he would still be alive. She broke off her thoughts and wiped the tears from her eyes. There is no more time for crying now, she told herself. I have much more to write. The story is far from over. For now comes a tale of Simon Fear, the most horrifying chapter of all. This has been a Nightfall Audiobooks production of The Fear Street Sagas Trilogy, Book 2, The Secret, by R. L. Stein. Hi, this is Chris with Nightfall Audiobooks. Thank you very much for joining me for The Fear Street Sagas Trilogy, Book 2, The Secret. This book was really fun to do. It covered Ezra and Jonathan's story and Abigail and Rachel. It jumps a hundred years later and you are finally introduced to Simon Fear as a young man being about 18 and his first run in with the goods and how he is going to keep the curse going because the goods surely haven't forgotten and neither will he. So book three will be Simon meeting Angelica and them buying the mansion or building the mansion on Fear Street and it burning down and we finally meet up with Nora and figure out what's going on with her and why she's locked up and what she's doing. It's going to be fun. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, please write me an email, nightfallaudiobooks at gmail.com. It's the only way to really know what's going on with this show. I'm on YouTube at Nightfall Audiobooks. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell whoever you think would like to listen to me tell them tales from Fear Street. So thank you very much, and I will see you next time.